Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. I'm Aisha, your host. Islamic history is filled with inspirational figures who we can all look up to and learn from to be model citizens in our lives today. Normally though, when we think of history and inspirational figures, we think of prophets and the male companions around the prophet. But what about the women? Those who are mentioned in the Quran and whom every man and woman can learn valuable lessons from. Well, we're about to embark on a series on remarkable women in Islamic history. Today we'll cover the lives of two empowering women, Hawa, the first woman on earth, and Asiya, the wife of Pharaoh. Joining me is Dr. Shabir Ali to discuss the lives of these women. Welcome to the show, Dr. Shabir. Pleasure to be on. So let's start with Hawa, so the first woman on earth. Who was she and how was she created? Hmm. Well, the, the Quran, um, interestingly, talks about the creation of uh, Adam and Eve. Um, and uh, the way in which this is mentioned in the Quran is slightly different from the way it is mentioned in the Bible. In the Bible, in the book of Genesis, it uh, says that God uh, created Adam and then uh, brought all of the animals to Adam to see in what he might find satisfaction. But he could find satisfaction in none of these things until God ev eventually created for him uh, a mate. Uh, and then it goes into detail by saying that God put Adam to sleep and uh, made a Eve from one of his ribs. Uh, and then he was able to say, this is flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. And uh, uh, the, the lesson is obviously that uh, men and women are close to each other and beloved to, to each other. Eve would be close to Adam's heart um, and, and together they uh, are, they will be one flesh, but they're already originally in, in a mm -hmm. way one flesh. Beautiful story. Uh, the, the Quran on the other hand uh, uh, has a different take on this in that the Quran says that God created us from a single soul. We know from the fourth chapter of the Quran, the first verse, uh, be mindful of God who created you from a single soul and then from that single soul has uh, made you into men and women. Um, and the seventh chapter of the Quran uh, speaks of God again created, creating you from a single soul and then from that soul its mate and then when he covered her uh, she bore a light weight which she was able to travel with. Uh, so this speaks about conception. But the sequence in which things are mentioned here uh, gives the impression that the, the single soul uh, was actually the female soul. Uh, and then God from that female created the male as well. Um, a, 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 a usual commentary on this is to say that it, it doesn't mean uh, like one person, it means like the same kind. God created you all from the same kind. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there's something that we, we don't quite fully grasp here. Uh, but uh, the impression given is uh, as if Eve is the original soul and from that original so feminine soul, uh, the male was also, also created and then when he covered her, uh, she conceived and then the, the human mm -hmm. uh, progeny began to flow from there. Um, this might be obvious, but maybe you can elaborate a little bit. Is there any significance in understanding the role of women in Islam given the limited information that we know about uh, Eve? Yes, yeah, so, uh, often the, the story of Adam and Eve is told from the point of view of Adam. And uh, this is both in the Bible and, and in the Quran. Uh, Eve takes a kind of a secondary place. But what is interesting is that the Quran uh, revises the picture a bit in, in this regard as well. Uh, in that the, the Quran says that uh, say God created them and placed them in the garden. And then Satan whispered to them and caused them to slip from the state of happiness in which they were. That's in the second chapter of the Quran. In the seventh chapter, uh, it, again, we have a similar uh, depiction that it, it is the two of them involved. And, and Satan uh, caused them to uh, remove their clothing. Is Satan is like misleading and whispering to them. This is in contrast with the biblical narrative where uh, in, in the book of Genesis we, we have it that uh, Satan uh, came to the woman and said to her, is it true that God said uh, that you are not to eat from this one particular tree? And, and then he uh, convinces her to eat from that tree. She eats from it and then she gives the fruit also to her husband and then he ate. So some people were able to make a point based on this that, that uh, Eve is like the gateway to Adam and the devil did not uh, approach Adam directly but went through the woman. And um, this begins a series of narratives in the Old Testament where women often are depicted uh, as um, um, 
uh, temptresses or uh, seductresses or so on. Um, uh, in the Quranic narrative, we have this situation uh, slightly reversed in that um, uh, we have Adam uh, on several occasions uh, and, and Eve together being spoken of as uh, being the objects of Satan's guile. Uh, and in one particular passage in the 20th chapter of the Quran, uh, in the 120th uh, verse, uh, and in that area, um, it is said that uh, Adam disobeyed his Lord. So specifically Adam, but the, in the other narratives there is no specific mention that Eve uh, disobeyed. N not she specifically, it's the two of them. Mm -hmm. So w with this in mind, we see that even with the limited knowledge we have of uh, Eve in the Quranic uh, narrative, we, we still have a different way of looking at her contribution to human society and the place of women more generally in human society. Women are not to be seen as seductresses or temptresses uh, or the, the source of the fall of man or the, or the cause of the fall of man. Uh, women are there, as, as the Bible says, actually as man's uh, helpmate. But more than this, uh, they are on equal footing as uh, servants of, of God. And uh, with or without men, uh, women should be and can be uh, servants of God. That's very beautiful. Thank you, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. Um, so let's now move uh, into the story of Asiya. So can you tell us a little bit about who she was and what we know about her? Uh, Asiya is uh, given in the Quran as the wife of the Pharaoh, uh, the Pharaoh, um, uh, who uh, had interactions with the prophet Moses. Uh, it is mentioned in the uh, story of Moses that uh, when his mother placed him in, in the uh, floating device, the vessel, and placed him upon the Nile River, uh, the vessel took him all the way to the court of the, ph ph of the Pharaoh. And uh, Pharaoh's uh, wife uh, then took up this baby and said, uh, Let's, let's not kill the baby, but let's uh, keep him. Maybe uh, we can adopt him and he can be of some benefit uh, to us and he will be a child to us. Uh, so her compassion, uh, which uh, is uh, known of, of women uh, more generally, uh, is pronounced in the, in the Quran and um, her, her care for what would be a prophet and messenger of God, one of the most important prophets in human history, uh, is uh, therefore registered in, in the Quranic text. And this is interesting because she came uh, from a, a background which uh, w was, was foreign to the perspective of God's people uh, in this particular narrative. Uh, and uh, normally narratives uh, tend to sideline other people and paint them in the darkest uh, pictures possible. But here the Quran is uh, showing that Asiya was not only a remarkable woman, but uh, despite the fact that she came from the other side, uh, she is uh, uh, nonetheless uh, a, a devout servant of God. So just building on that point, given that she was uh, the wife of Pharaoh, how did that, did that impact her relationship with God and how did she, you know, how did that work out? Uh, of course, an impact could be both positive uh, or, uh, and, and negative. Uh, in this case, we see that from the 66th chapter of the Quran in the 11th verse, Asiya is painted as an example of a true believer. Uh, so the Quran is saying, in essence, if you want to know what a true believer is like, look at Asiya. And, uh, and, and the Quran says that uh, she said, uh, she, she said in her prayer, uh, my, my Lord, uh, build for me in your presence a, a house in paradise and rescue me from the Pharaoh and from the uh, oppressive people. So she was in the midst of oppressive people, but she didn't want to be one of them. And in addition to her husband being Pharaoh, so that further complicated things a little bit. Exactly, and that shows that uh, you know a woman may have an oppressive husband, but she can be her own person, and she can decide uh, what is right, and she can do uh, and follow what is right. So just wrapping this up, what can we take from, uh, if there's one takeaway lesson that you would want our viewers to take about Eve and Asya, what would, what would that one takeaway message be? Well, uh, in both cases we see that uh, the Quran depicts these women as um, independently uh, persons of their own, uh, servants uh, of God, 
who can decide what is right and do what is right. Uh, and that is a lesson for all of us uh, today, for both men and women. Uh, in the case of Asia, uh, living in the midst of oppression but deciding to do what is right and not to follow the op oppressive forces and not to allow herself to be uh, dominated by the oppression around her. Uh, this all gives us hope uh, today that we ourselves, with the help of God, can hold our own ground and stand up for truth and justice. I know I feel very empowered, so thank you, <laughs> Dr. Shabir. You're welcome.